Welcome everyone, this is Unstoppable Streletsy coming to you today with another Civ preview for the Great War patch that is coming soon to the Wars of Liberty mod. Now from a viewer request, they wanted to see the Chileans. I think that there are probably some more Civs that have a lot more changes than the Chileans, but since it was a viewer request, why don't we start with this one for today. Chileans, they've received mostly balance changes. They also received some bug fixes related to their skins, such as that of the Imperial Civico and some for the Frontier Cavalry, where they weren't exactly showing up as they should have, now that they are working. We'll go over some of those balance changes, some of those bug fixes, and some modifications to certain cards to fit the new theme of religion. We'll be trying it today on a new map called Serra du Mar, a jungle hill range that separates the land from the sea. I don't know what sort of bot we can use. Why don't we try Maori for fun, you know? I know the Maori bot is kind of fun to use, so let's try him out. Same settings as usual. I built a custom deck to show the new cards, or rather the cards that were changed, and we'll try to use as many of them as possible throughout the match, and the ones that we don't show I'll go over at the end. Okay, let's get started. I don't know which Latin American country this is. You'll have to tell me which one this is later on. Mi comandante, en marcha. Okay, so let's get started here. I can already see the jungle parts protruding out. Is there any water on this map? I'm curious. Because I talks about the water being separated from the land. Maybe there is a bit of water, who knows. I'm going to have to do a little bit of looky work to see if we can find any. Now this map does have Jesuit natives, interesting. Might be able to utilize those a little bit later with one of the card changes that I was talking about. Let's grab some gold from this treasure here. I'm gonna be scouting around a little bit to see, you know, what this map looks like. I've never been on it before. See how new it really is. I'm gonna kite my way back here. There we go. These gators. Get that treasure from them. So let's think about getting our next card soon. Still using that little UI change that Maxi was having me test the other day. The flag at the top. I'm gonna grab that treasure, just scout around, see if there's anything important we need to keep in mind. It looks like the trade route's gonna be in the center map. Why don't we just get some rotos to start with? Keep it simple at first, and then we can add stuff later in as we go. We don't want our economy to fall back too behind. Oh, looks like the yeah, enemy captured that sheep. Let's intercept them and get those for us. Might be able to use those a little bit later. And we certainly don't want them using them. If we don't end up being them, at least they can't eat them. Oh, it's an XP treasure back at home. Let's grab that. Okay, let me go forward here. Move these huntables in a little bit if we can. How much uh, rotos am I going to go up with? Really depends. Uh, can we go up with 16 or can we go up with 17? Uh, I mean, I think we're alright with 16, I think. Had a bit of a shift there and got into the uh, hunts, but um, I think we're alright. Uh, I'm going to go up with the... I'll go up with the Arabs. Get that nice trading post caravan going so we can get ourselves a nice trading post. 
Since this seems to be a central trade route that we can easily exploit. Or maybe I'll go for the natives, who knows. Even though I don't think that this particular native is going to be super duper good against the Maori unless we put them into melee against any potential club fighters that they make. Now this is an interesting landmark. It, it seems like a cliff, but it has a lot of jungle trees on it. I'm not used to seeing a cliff done like this before. Can we climb up into this forest, or is it inaccessible? Oh, so we can actually climb into this elevated position and walk through the trees a bit. I wonder where the AI is. How it looks on their side. I'm gonna send this card, Quasimodo. This card was actually changed. Before what it did, it, is, it gave us a church wagon with the faith trickle. And as you know, faith is no longer a resource, right? It's been saved for oil to be used in the Great War Age. As such, the effect was slightly changed to give us two priests instead of a faith trickle. So, it's like a lot of those other cards that gives us a church wagon, but instead of increasing its build limit, simply just gives us a couple of healers that we can use as a support unit. Nothing too big and fancy. Uh, I'm gonna put the... Let's take a TP, actually. I don't think we're gonna need these natives right away. Might make it a little bit later, but who knows how these matches go. I don't expect a lot of assault units coming out early. If anything, I'll build on the Jesuits to deal with potential artillery. They go for siege. I'm gonna build my church, get that XP trickle going. Remember, churches, Moors Liberty are now like those in Definitive Edition. They trickle XP, they no longer have religions. That's one thing you need to keep in mind as you're playing along with the match. I'm going to grab this hunt right over here, and I'm going to move up. I'm going to scout this quadrant here, make sure we can find any potential treasures while we can. And let's see, is there anything worth sending right now? Uh, not quite. Well... Why don't we send this, actually? Why well, go over this one? This one's really important. You remember during the League when we were having this new Fast Imperial build with the Chileans? Yeah, so the developers paid very close attention to that and they wanted to code that out of the game because that was really, really insane. Now, we have seen stuff in the Asian Diocese of people being able to get in pages in like 10 to 9 minutes. But under very, very close, specific circumstances with map, very careful micro. You really shouldn't be able to get like a 10 or 11 minute age up to the Imperial Age without little effort. So what they did was, is they set it to make it a little bit less powerful, right? It obviously doesn't make the age ups as cheap as they used to be. And... As a result, the card is still useful, and we can save a little bit of resources when we're going for FFs using it. And to help progress this along later. But what it won't do is let us acquire that fast Imperial Age, like it did previously. And as an additional way to avoid the fast Imperial Age situation, developers also changed a additional card that I can go over right now to sort of explain it. So the second card here in age three, the Sociedad de la Igualdad. Remember what this used to do. This also used to cheapen economic technologies, which include the Aegeps. To remedy this, what the developers did was they made it more emphasized in its other role to make villagers train quicker. Initially, it used to just improve their training rate by 20%, so they buffed it up to 30% and removed any potential effects that it had in cheapening Aegeps, or any technologies for that matter, to avoid that fast imperial risk that was going on before. And at this point, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to get stagecoach right now, since this trade route is 
angled towards our side of the map. It's unlikely that the bot will be able to protrude out here that much. And at the same time, I'm going to get some defensive stuff going out, a stable and a barracks, so we can get some Lanceros and Sadikos if we need to. Or any other potential units later on. Uh, let's, um... I'm just going to get some Lanceros, yeah. Get a bit of scout. Even if we don't need to defend right away, I can actually scout and do some potential raiding with it. And I'll always have the priest right here to help do some healing work, too. Hmm. I didn't notice the priest actually had Duke of Suffering now in this ability. That's pretty interesting. I don't know quite all the things they did with the priest. It does seem like they can still do a bit of siege with the Holy Hand Grenade, though. That's nice. In marcha. The only priest that can do the condemn action anymore, I think, is the Inquisitors, if anyone still gets them as an ability, and also the Grigory Rasputin with the Russians, which you would get in Imperial Age with the Grigory Rasputin politician. I think those are the only can priests that do that ability anymore. Now, I think they should have kept that ability to make some of the more... Uh, priest related cards like the Bulgarians get a little bit more significant in support roles, but that's just me. Let's see if we can uh, see, I found some nice stragglers here that we can uh, do a bit of raiding work to. Uh, I'm gonna get out of there because I know this explorer is gonna do some look, siege workshop, so as I predicted, he is gonna go for a bit of siege. I'm going to build a trading post in this particular spot. So we might be able to get some maneuver units later to deal with potential artillery troubles. I am going to get some Savikos as well to deal with potential fighter issues. I'm going to send some Yungeos to deal with infantry threats. Since the Yungeos is a bombardier type of grenadier, can throw constant grenades. Being able to be good against group things if in particular skirmish units in this case since as you know the Maori work in a very rock paper scissors way they got a skirmish unit that fires from range they got a melee spearman and they got a fighter unit all right so what i'm gonna get now is i'm gonna ship some escopateros in as well just keep up with everything one more thing i need to keep i gotta teach you too you remember how in this patch there was a new little balance change where market technologies, farming technologies, even the gathering upgrade cards made the rotos a little bit more expensive in a resource that it improved? Yeah, so that's a little bit more emphasized in this patch. Before what it did was I think it only made the unit look more expensive by like one I think. So it would be more expensive by like one wood if we sent the chopping technology. Now if you look at it, now it's up to six with the simple level one chopping upgrade. The reason for that is, is before the balance aspect and also the significance of that anti-bonus was not really present there. So they just wanted to make it a little bit more well known now. I think now, the way we might want to go is, is, um, let's go up with the, hmm, good question. Do you want the Arabs for their market gathering rate, or do we want, let's go with Germany. The reason I like Germany is because they obviously give us a lot of works wagons that we can use for various functionalities later on. Uh. I'm going to move out some workers out here, get them to work. I'm going to keep the Arabs nearby, since they're a very valuable unit. That helps us trickle all sorts of resources at the same time. Okay, this is a little concerning. He has the Bush Ranger from one of his voyages scouting out around here. 
Gotta be careful with that. And oh yeah, by the way, before we get to Australia in another upload, they got a lot of changes. Just keep in mind that he's a skirmisher now. Yeah. They've kind of swapped roles with the Rum Corpsmen, since it made a little bit more sense in terms of what they actually were. Yeah, I'm gonna get a uh, Savico here, keep the Lancero Q going. We want to make sure we got enough to defend with. And based on my floating resources, I think we are going to get an artillery foundry as well. Maybe make some artisanal cannons. Doesn't seem like a bad idea, honestly. I'm going to get some hunting upgrades. It will make them more expensive in food, as you'll notice. That's okay. We seem to be doing okay in Komida right now. So I think we can afford that. That Maori bud is doing quite good right now. You can see their score going up quite a bit. They actually went made it to the third age before we did. I'm gonna get some conks now in case they go for a heavy siege push early on. Uh, let's get the house going. These are not ordinary houses, these are the air houses that trickle XP. Or are they? Wait a sec, I'm trying to remember now. Oh yeah, so the Arab houses actually got a different change. What they used to do was, they used to trickle XP. Now they've been changed to just support more population than average, giving them more value. More bang for their buck. Because normally you get a hundred wood house, it gives you t hundred, gives you ten population. These cost a hundred fifty wood and they'll give you an extra five population. So, it's really not any more significant. Like, you're not getting a pop for free, really, in that cost, but the houses are a little bit more valuable to keep going. Let's get some readouts open. You know, the cool thing about Germany immigrants is, as soon as we get them for the first time, in any age beyond the first one that you can get them, they will make the readouts have an extra upgrade for free. Like if we waited to age four, not that I wanted to do it this time, they would actually have gone fully upgraded with both the capital age and the industrial age upgrades. Right, I'm gonna get some more artisanal cannons because you know, Maori, they love their infantry. And I'm gonna get some more um, Savikos as well. I'm gonna get some Lanceros. Now that I'm thinking about this, did they add hotkeys for a lot of these units? Wow, this bot is getting kind of intense. He's going for all my trade routes. That's very, very brutal. I'm going to make sure I kill these guys. These are spearmen, by the way. So what to us, spearmen? Uh, let's go up there and clear those ones out and... Reclaim this trading post of mine. I want to keep that if possible. It's bringing in a lot of XP. And while we have a lot of XP, why don't we get started adding in some of those immigrant units? Yeah, that would be kind of helpful. One, one. Uh, yeah, let's add some immigrant units. Would definitely bolster our numbers a bit for free. I'm gonna be queuing one out of the Arab settlement, and I'll be queuing one out of the German settlement. The reason to do this is, is to make the most maximum use of all building efficiency. As you see, we're doing a bit of, bit of uh, resource floating here, and it's not good. When you're floating resources, try to spend them on something. Because that something can potentially help you defend a lot easier, it can help you acquire additional technologies, and eventually beat your enemy in the end. We seem to be doing really good right now because of the investment in artisanal cannons. Because I notice, hey, we're floating a lot of wood. We're floating a lot of coins. So let's get some artillery, make the most of what we're floating. And let's upgrade these Savikos too. By the way, I'm going to go over a little bit of a stats change. Savikos actually have gained a bit more range in their range attack. They used to only have about 10 range, actually. Which I didn't notice personally because I didn't really use them a lot as Chilean range. I cared more about their hand attack. So it's kind of nice knowing that the Savikos now fire at the same range as a standard line infantry and aren't behind. 
terms of their range. Yeah, I think now we should probably go for a bit of a push, maybe, since we have the numbers. We could probably do some serious damage to him if we want to. Uh, I'm going to go for this mine since it's nearby. I'm going to get placer mines. Or what is it called? Stone washing for Latin America. Oh boy, let's go up here first. See, you always have to keep reconnaissance of your nearby base. Uh, and one thing I wish that... Oh wait a second, I'll get it now. Is Volatin. Volatin is a card if you haven't used it before that um all it really does is is it uh let me just make sure these guys get in somewhere safely before we talk uh, this card uh i'm pretty confident we can stay safe but I'm just m making sure i can keep these spearmen in check because we could really do some serious raiding trouble if we're not careful now let me just make sure we smother them a bit. Alright, I'll go over it now. So, Volantin, if you haven't used it before, simply allowed the Rotos to move faster and see a bit farther. Now, in this patch, it's been improved a little bit to help the Rotos move even faster than they did before. So, if you are getting raided and you need to get out somewhere fast, this card does let you run out there a bit quicker and stay safe. Which is really good. Now, I'm a little bit scared of that number of spearmen that he's spamming out there. He's probably doing that because of all these nice German immigrant cavalry that we're meat shielding with. So I'm just going to add some more artisanal guns with the upgrade we have. And just keep pushing forward. Oh wow, so he actually did go for some siege. Interesting. It's quite interesting, actually. Didn't expect him to go for any siege. Because there was a bit of a change in the AI plans a long time ago to discourage bots from actually building siege weapons. So we could see more infantry, more cavalry. Because as you know from fighting AIs in the Asian dynasties, they just loved to spam horse artillery and falconets. And also somewhat hussars, and they never made, you know, musketeers, crossbow, and halberdiers. Some of the things we wanted them to do to make it feel more balanced and nuanced. I'm noticing that we're actually not getting any sort of food at all, so... When I might... Is he scouting with that, or is he going to attack base? Yeah, he's just scouting around. Wow, we put a pod this far north. Did they change the AI to focus more on map control or something? That's kind of interesting. I didn't expect that. What I am going to do, though, is I'm going to get these guys out of the TC and start farming a bit. In addition, what we might be able to do is we might be able to send the send the other card, um, Tralia a Yagua Suelta, and get some of those nice horses, those caballos, right? I love those caballos. They give us a lot of food. No changes were done to the card, but I just like the card in general. Let's put up a couple more towers here. I'm gonna put a bit of a tower wall here. Keep this very persistent AI from pressuring me too much. I just took out his forward building there, which I was really shocked that they included algorithms to teach it to do that. That's kind of cool, actually. Oh, we actually even built more siege. I see another catapult, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bit of a wall here and all right so let's push forward at the enemy's base I think. I think we're finally good to start doing that get a um, hacienda upgrade here uh, oh uh, this is kind of cool actually it seems like this block can build armies pretty quickly and deploy pretty fast kind of nice because you don't always think of AoE 3 as having the most brutal AIs. You think of maybe Age of Empires 2 or even Age of Mythology. Like yesterday when you saw me fighting that one with uh, Squidward against the um, Greeks in the north. Ah, oh, cool. Is, 
Looks like he is doing a bit of secondary raiding, but that's okay. I'm just gonna pin him down here, start killing his uh, spearmen where they're being produced, so we can crush them a bit. I think that would save us a lot of trouble. I'm gonna ship in some more of those nice German immigrants. Start taking care of them. Yeah, I'm impressed with how this AI is just spamming and spamming. He's making lots of catapults and lots of the Tejeda was spearmen, too. Well, this is actually kind of cool, right? He knows how to perfectly balance anti-cav with artillery siege. We do have a lot of talented AI scripters on the Wars of Liberty team. And when development first started on the mod, I didn't know if we ever were going to have a functioning AI for a while. I considered doing a bit of AI scripting myself for a number of years, but let me tell you, you go into the data folder and you look at the um, AI files, you really don't want to ever do AI scripting because of how tricky it looks. Fortunately, we had some people that were willing to pick up the bill for us and do a really good job. I really appreciate the work they've done. Quite a lot of work, too. It's not an easy task. Trust me, I've looked at that script before. You get lost in it. The coding language itself is pretty simple and close to C++. But trust me when I say you, you, did, you normally don't want to develop in that area. It's really hard. And that's coming from a software developer, too. So you gotta know for sure. I'm talking the truth on that. Uh, Alright, I'm just going to keep making these immigrant horses for now. We can talk about any cards we don't get to use that were changed at the end. I think. I just want to make sure we kill this bot. After the type of pain we had yesterday with getting slaughtered by Brazil, I think we just want to kill this bot mercilessly, I think. And I think you'd like to see that too. Um, Let's get, let's destroy this paw and move in for the kill. If I get to send anything before that, I will. I made a couple of escoltas just to supplement the anti-line unit strength that we have. And I'm finally going to rebuild these trading posts that this bot has been obnoxiously attacking this whole game. And quite intelligently, too. It's been cutting down on my XP. So, ooh! So he's upgraded his marksman to the two power marksman. All right. This bot is adapting a bit because he sees less cavalry, so he's making some more skirmish. Or those might have potentially been shipped in. I don't know. I haven't looked at his deck. Wow, he built uh, sandalwood trees and he's actually using them. That's nice to see too. So the bot does know a thing or two about his macro. That's nice. Uh, I'm gonna. Sh Bring these guys in. Oh, his paws actually attacking. Ah, nice. It's good to see. Bot doing actions. Wow, this is a persistent little bot here. I tell you, I was not expecting such a gruesome fight today from this thing. Um, any cool cards we can send soon? Oh, so he's sending in more and more Tehedawa Spearmen. Just take these out. Cool. Let's take out his remnants if we can. Is there any other cards we can talk about today? Sure, I guess uh, Missiones. Missiones got a really small tweak. Now, in general, I want to tell you that Missionis has been modified for native warriors to give double the experience bounty when they're trained. If you recall before, Missionis, being a religious style card, used to give you faith for each native unit trained. Since religion is no longer here, we no longer use faith. It was simply replaced with XP making native units give us really good build bounties that we can funnel into sending cards earlier. And in particular for Chile, this was modified to give us a crate of experience points instead of coin. Just to emphasize its effect a little bit more, and you just saw the XP being picked up right there too. 
which is nice. Um, okay, let's age up. Let's go get the, uh, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe. Mm, yeah, let's get this. This looks nice. Might be able to get railroads for free. If we get there in time. Seem to be killing it right now. Yeah. Seem to be killing it right now. Boy, are we doing a good job against this spot. Just need to find any stragglers, I think, and then we'll be good. Oh, a Palista town. That's interesting. I haven't seen one of those nades in a while. They got a pretty nasty... Actually, this is kind of weird because we, there's literally two different types of maneuver units on this map. It's kind of interesting. And I finally found the water, too. That's the water I was searching for this whole time because... Remember the map description of being like a jungle barrier between the land and the water. I guess this is the jungle land barrier, and this is the land, and this is the sea down here and where the palistas are. Alright, let's just get rid of these catapults. And let's thrust our way through these catapults. Cool, let's get rid of this training grounds. Alright, let's, uh... Okay, let's get some rotos up there, move them onto the mining. I think we're gonna move towards these paws down here and finish them off, I think. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Let's get... S no, I'll keep it on that. Alright. I think we can beat him with what we got right now, honestly. Anything else we need to go over? Um, oh yeah, I guess there was a fix for these huevos here, where before they couldn't auto-generate when they were idle, which they're technically supposed to do, so that was fixed. Which is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, see, see here, these, um... Villagers have become quite a bit more expensive as we've been slowly acquiring additional economic upgrades. Which they should. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna send the Suevos now. I think we could really use them. Suevos are a fun unit to use. They're like the Skultas, but at range. And on foot, which is kind of interesting. When they first started out, they were supposed to be like, you know, a boring skirmisher unit that the French would have, since they wouldn't have normal skirmishers initially. Then it was decided on to make them into something interesting. You know, a foot, ass foot assault unit to make it great at blasting against multiple types of infantry at the cost of being vulnerable to maneuvers and having that hand armor instead of the normal range. I'm gonna take out these gatherers here so that we don't get any escapees, as they say. Uh. Ooh, that's cool. They speak Chilean now. That's nice. I don't know if they speak Chilean in the last patch. That's a nice addition. I know that they said too is another change in this patch, the fireman emergency you, you get from the immigrants now also speaks a Chilean dialect, no longer a Colombian one. That was another thing I saw in the change log as well. Alright, let's, let's Yeah, let's, all right, let's get him. Alright. I think we're good. I think we're good now. Seem to have a lot of resources banked up, so let's Get another mill. I'm gonna stick these on mining. Maybe I'll just put change the trade route to uh huh. cool. Was that was that acceptable or was that unethical? I don't know. To me it seemed alright. You know. See if that bot will do anything to stop us, potentially. Otherwise, he has only four minutes left to survive. Hmm. I guess one thing we could check in the last four minutes is... 
Let's build a quick stable here and see if the upgrades on these Frontier Cav really do work now, where it shows the texture changes properly now. Brutal, so this bud. Now this is quite interesting. It seems like this bot is effectively rebuilt and evaded capture for this long. It shows that these bots are actually able to adapt now quite well. Which I'm really impressed to see actually. Yeah. Yeah, let me get these artisanal cannons on them. Yeah. Good. Yeah, let's build a couple of Frontier Cav and see if their unique uh, texture upgrades really do work. Yeah, see, it is, this is uh, indeed a universal change for Latin Americans. Instead of getting an additional 10% stats with their Royal Guard upgrades, what they get instead is 10% cheaperness. Yeah, they become a little bit cheaper to train. So if we sent this technology, which we're going to, to make in colonial gendarmes, it will become about, like, I don't know, like 70-something food, and probably like 28 or 27 coin. I'll pay attention to these guys to see what their texture change is now. See something interesting, hopefully, in their new appearance. Yeah, that bot's not coming back, it looks like. Oh, uh, yeah, he, he, he's not gonna... Oh, wait a minute, oh boy, I was gonna... I was supposed to wait. That's alright. That's alright. I believe him. I believe him. I don't think we have to prove anything. And uh, we, just keep in mind, too, when you're using Soldados de Mar, that these are now a very different type of naval unit. They no longer have that crush damage. They're more like infantry culverin sort of with anti-artillery multipliers so don't go spamming these things thinking they're gonna rip apart infantry and cavalry anymore they're just gonna probably be really good for just targeting maybe their mule artillery or their artisanal cannons really well or their ships uh, just make sure you keep keep up with the stat changes and I'm sure when the patch releases they'll show the new stats in full so you can do the math in your head and plan that accordingly Anyways, this was a good match. It was good to go over a more mildly changed Civ. Definitely way milder than the Dutch rework or the Argentinian roster changes. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the little changes that were done. Enjoyed the new map. And also got to appreciate how strong even the Polynesian AI is now. And how it's able to adapt, build multiple buildings across the map and attack with both siege units and infantry units. I was very impressed to see that. Now I'm curious to see if they made it to industrial age would they actually upgrade their siege workshop and build the more updated siege weapons like the cannade or the ballista and as well as the whip spearmen. That would have been also interesting to see. Maybe in another another video we'll see that. Who knows. Well, I'm just going to go over the post-game stats and sign off, I think. Okay, yeah, we... Oh, wow, that bar beat us in economy. Uh, militarily kills, yeah, we that's where we dominated. So, I think we're that's enough for this tutorial for the Chileans. Coming up in the next patch. Hope to see you next time. Maybe we'll cover a more changed civilization. I'll look through the patch notes for tomorrow and find one that's a little bit more updated, like, say, the way Argentina was updated. See you next time. Joy on Unstoppable Stiletsu YouTube channel.